Testing is often a step that gets overlooked, but it's so beneficial. It gives you confidence that your application won't break as more features are developed. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer, and I wanna help you level up and get you to where you wanna be. So if this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. This video is part of a multi-part series in building a full stack application in Redwood JS. And so far, most of the videos have been about understanding basic concepts or project setup. But now we're moving into the really fun part where we're building components, functionality, and features. But real quick, before we get into writing code, I did want to point out that I've listed chapter marks within the description below. Feel free to jump around to the section that you need. All right, let's start by looking at Figma and what we're going to build. So we're going to be working on this navigation bar that appears at the top when the user starts to scroll down. So there are two different versions, one version for when the user is logged in, which is actually this version. You can see that they'll have access to links that they've shared, comments, favorites. They'll be able to log out and view their profile. And then if they are not logged in, then they can sign up or log in. We haven't built our authentication system yet, so I can't include the logic that determines what buttons are showing or not showing, but I can go ahead and create all the styles that we need to make this look great. So let's start by going over to VS Code and writing out our HTML or our JSX so that we have something to hang our styles on. So we've already generated our component. I'm gonna go into our web source components we have our nav component here. And let's get rid of this div inside. So first we want there to be a nav and we'll put half of our nav on the left side and half of our nav on the right side. So on the left side, I'm gonna have an unordered list with a list item. Inside we can use the text home and we want this to link to our routes.feed page. Now remember, link is a Redwood component that's coming from our router, and there's an entire YouTube video dedicated just to the router. So I'll include that in the card above and the description below. We'll also need to import our routes. Excellent. Now I'm going to duplicate this because we'll want to do the same thing for our latest, and we'll want that to go to our latest route. We we'll wanna do the same thing for our submit a link and that will go to our submit link page. Excellent. Now we're gonna do something similar on our right side. So we'll have another unordered list with an LI tag. And this will go to our sign up page. Now we haven't generated our sign up pages yet because we're going to use the Redwood DB auth system. So for now, I'm just going to use an A tag, which is really what the link component renders out as. Same with the login page and the logout page. Now what's a little bit different about logout when we get to that is that this is actually going to be a button. So I'm gonna change that from an A tag to a button tag. And then lastly, I have a link to my profile. So let's change the text here to be my profile. And we want this to link to routes.profile. And in this case, we do need to pass it a nickname and for right now, I'm just going to hard code in Amy. I'm gonna give that a save. So as we write our styles, let's take a look at what we're actually styling. So I'm gonna pull up my terminal and inside I'm gonna run yarn Redwood storybook so that we have something to look at and we're not flying blind. Okay, so first up, I'm going to pull up our nav component and you can see that here is our two list of links. So first let's get our right side nav on the right side. So back in VS Code, I'm gonna come up to our nav element wrapper and I'm gonna add a class name and we're just gonna apply some Tailwind styles. So first I'm going to apply a class of flex which will get our left side and our right side next to each other. Then I'm gonna say justify between so that it'll put the two on complete opposite ends. It'll put as much space as it can between those two. I wanna give it a background color of cinder. I'm gonna add some padding on the left and right, so PX of six. I'm gonna add some padding on the top and bottom, so I'm gonna say PY of three, which will give us 12 pixels of padding. I wanna add a slight shadow, so I'll say shadow medium. I want this to stick to the top of our page, so I'm gonna give this a class of fixed, 
and I want it to go all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and all the way to the top. And I do want it to appear on top of everything else. So I'm gonna give it a Z index of 50. So I'm gonna hit save and let's just take a look at what we did. So if I hit refresh, you can see now we have that gray, our left side's on the left and our right side's on the right. And it is placed at the top of our screen. Now let's come back over to VS Code and for our list items, I wanna add some styles there. And we could add classes to each of our list items, but personally, I find that redundant. Plus, that means if I wanna make any changes, I've gotta make it in seven different places. So let's pull up our index.css file. I'm gonna add a layer here for our base styles. Now, these are for things like tags that we wanna create some base styles for. Then we also have a layer for our components. So that's any specific elements that we want to create styles for. And then lastly, we have some utilities. And really the main utility that I'm constantly reaching for is a center utility. So I add this to most of my Tailwind projects where I just give it a class of flex and say justify center and item centered so that anytime I add a class of center, it will center it horizontally and vertically. Now in our case, since we are styling our navigation, I'm gonna move this over to the right so we can see our DOM structure here as well as our styles. I'm going to add a class to this called top bar. So now we're really just styling a component called top bar, but I wanna be specific here. So I'm gonna say that when we have our navigation of top bar, I wanna reference our unordered list. So this will apply to both the left side and the right side. I wanna apply a class of flex. I want to center that vertically. So I'll say items center. And then I wanna add some space in between. So I'm gonna say a gap of 12. Now give this a save and let's just see what this looks like within the browser. So you can see that all of our nav elements are in line, which is great. Now let's add some more styles. So I'm gonna say for our top bar here, we have our unordered list. We have a list item, but we also have some buttons that we want to style. And we also have our A tag, which is not only our anchor link that we explicitly defined here, but it's really also our link components since that gets rendered out as an A tag. So for this, we want to apply a font of bold. We want it to be white so that we can actually read it. I'm gonna give this a class of inline block because by default, an A tag is a display of inline. So I want that now to be inline block. And when you hover over this, I want to apply our class of Icterine. So I'm gonna save this and let's see what we have. Awesome, so now we can actually see our links, which is what we want. So I'm gonna come back over. Our DOM structure over here, we have this link but really I want it to be displayed as a button. But because we're using that not as a button, but to go to another page, semantically link is the appropriate tag, but for styling purposes, I'm going to add a class name of button. And I can actually do the same thing here for login because I want that to look like a button. So now let's actually write those styles. So here in our index.css, I'm going to use nav top bar again, UL, LI. And this time, anytime we have an A tag with a class of button, I'm going to apply a background of blue. I wanna add some top and bottom padding to that, some left and right padding to that. I wanna make the text black, but when you hover over it, I want it to be that Icterine color. And let's give this a save and see what we're looking at. Awesome, so these look like buttons now, perfect. Now, the only other thing that might not be immediately obvious because our page isn't scrolling, but when you first load the page, I don't want this nav to be visible. I actually want it to slide down as the user scrolls down. And we can do all of that with CSS. So within that components layer, I'm going to create some keyframes and I'm gonna call this scroll down because I want it to be triggered when the user scrolls down, but really that name could be anything we want it to be. Now at 0%, I want the translate Y value to be negative 100%. So it's actually going to be off screen. Then when the user scrolls down, say about 10%, I still want this to be at negative 100%. But when the user gets to say maybe 35% down the screen, 
I wanna translate that to 0%. So now I'm gonna create a class called Sticky Bar, since this is for the top bar that sticks to the top. I'm gonna say that the animation we're going to use is our scroll down animation, and I just want it to animate linearly. Then for the timeline, this is really interesting. We can actually set this to scroll. So it's not really based on time, but it's based on the user's scrolling. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and let's come back over to Storybook. And as it is right now, we have no way of really testing that scroll behavior. So I'm gonna to come to VS Code and let's go into our nav.stories.tsx file. And down here we have our primary story. And one thing that I can do is I can say for rendering, I want to show our nav. And actually, if we just hit save, it looks the same as it does now. But let's make this a little bit more complicated. And I'm also going to create, say, some lorem ipsum. Let's create maybe 10 paragraphs. And I'm gonna paste this in. And for each of these paragraphs, I'm going to wrap these with a P tag. So I can just wrap that, hit save, and now let's take a look. So we have our paragraph of text. You can see it's scrolling, it is fixed to the top, but our animation isn't working. Why not? Well, it's because we did not put our class of sticky bar on our nav components. So let's come back over. And here we have top bar, we'll also add sticky bar. And we can hit save and check it out. So we're scrolled to the very top, our nav isn't there. And then as soon as we scroll down, you see it appear. That's kind of cool, right? Now this is just another reason why I love Storybook. We were able to do all of that development and testing without creating any dummy pages or interfering with our production code. Now that our navigation looks good, let's write some tests. And I have a whole series on YouTube all about writing tests within React. And I'll stick a link in the description below. But in particular, I wanted to highlight the intro to testing, which I'll also highlight in the card above. Ding, ding, ding. In particular, that video, I do a good job, if I do say so myself, of introducing testing and all the different types of tests. Now, the important thing to remember when testing is that you want to test the component in the way that the user is going to interact with the component. So what do they expect? Well, in our case, they expect the navigation links to go to the right places, and they expect certain links to be available when they're logged in, and certain links to be available when they're logged out. Okay, so when we generated our component in Redwood, we already know that it created a component and a storybook file. We've been working inside of those, but it also generated a test file. So let's take a look at this. Out of the box, Redwood gives us a single test. And this test simply checks to make sure that the component renders without any errors, that it renders successfully. Now, the thing that I like about testing is that it reads pretty naturally. Good tests should also become documentation and will describe everything that a component is expected to do. So here, we're describing the nav. Describe is one way that just groups tests together. So you can actually nest describe blocks inside of each other. In fact, we'll do that later when we want to group our logged in and our logged out tests together. Then each individual test is wrapped in an it block. And you wanna keep tests as small as possible and only test one thing at a time. That way if something breaks, you can tell exactly what broke. Now, as I mentioned before, this test is checking to make sure that it renders successfully. So we're expecting the component to render and not throw any errors. So let's run our test to make sure that it's passing. Here within the terminal, I'm gonna hit Control C to exit Storybook. And I'm going to say yarn redwood test. And that's all we have to do to get our tests up and running. Pretty impressive, right? Now this actually ran our entire test suite and you can see that we have some that are passing and some that are failing. So one thing that we can do is we can use this watch usage and hit the letter P and we want to provide a filter. So here I'm just gonna say nav and I'm gonna select by hitting the down arrow nav.test.tsx. So now it's only going to run our tests for our nav component. And I'm gonna move our panel over to the right side because I like having just a little bit more room and having our tests up here right next to our component that we're actually testing. Cool, but that, that's it. We didn't have to do any type of setup. Redwood just created this passing test for us. So now let's start writing our own tests. 
So first, I like to go through and make a list of all the things that I want to test and really just use that as a checklist. So I'm going to create an it block and the first parameter that it takes describes the functionality. So we can say that it links to the home page. Now the second parameter that it takes is a function. So I'm just going to stub out an empty arrow function. Then to make sure that this test is not going to run just yet, I'm going to add a skip to the beginning. Now let's duplicate this line and keep making our list. So we can also say that it links to the submit a link page. We can also say that it links to the login page and the sign up page and the log out page and the profile page. Now, as soon as I hit save, the test suite should run again, but this time you'll notice that we have a bunch more tests, but they skipped all of our tests. Now, forward thinking, these links aren't always going to be available. So once we add authentication to our application and the user is logged in, the link to login shouldn't always be there. So that test should actually fail. So let's go ahead and group our tests with nested describe blocks. So here at the top, and actually we should always have a link to the homepage, so I'll leave that one. But I'm going to describe when a user is not logged in. And then our second parameter is going to be a function that's really just going to wrap our it blocks. So when the user is not logged in, then they should see a link to login and they should see a link to sign up. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this describe block, except this time say when the user is logged in, they should be able to submit a link, they can log out, they can link to the profile page, and then we want to close that out. Now, as soon as I hit save, you'll see the grouping of our tests change. So I'm gonna hit save. And now you'll notice that it says when a user is not logged in, these things will happen. When a user is logged in, these things will happen. So this didn't really change the functionality of our tests, but it changed the grouping and the display of what that looks like. Now let's work back through our tests and actually write these out. Now for our first test, this is for linking to our homepage. Let's go ahead and remove the skip at the beginning so that our test will run. If you're new to testing, every test is going to have three major steps, also referred to as the AAA pattern. So first we're going to arrange. This is where we wanna set up the test, create objects, initialize variables, and configure the environment to ensure that the test is running in the right context. Number two, we act. So this is where you perform a specific action or an operation. Usually this means you're calling that function or method that you just set up and arranged in step one. Now, step three is assert. So this is where you verify that that end result was what you expected. So if the assertion fails, then you know that you have a problem or a bug. First, we wanna arrange the test. So to set the test up, we want to render out our nav component, and then we need to act. And usually this is where you click on a button or do something with the component you just rendered. But for this test, we don't really need to perform an action, but we do need to grab our home link. So we can set up a constant for that, and I'll just call this home link. And then the JavaScript testing library gives us a screen that we can then get by text. And I want to grab our home link by referencing that home text. So we just need to make sure that we import screen at the top. So that's also coming from our testing library that Redwood gives us. Now, I just wanna point out, there's a whole bunch of ways that you can grab an element. And this is where IntelliSense is really your friend. So if I comment this out and I just say screen, you can see so many options here for trying to grab and work with the element that you want to test. But as much as possible though, you want to grab an element based on how it's being rendered in the browser or what the user is seeing. So in this case, by the text home, so that's what the user sees in the browser and how they're going to interact with that element. But sometimes it can be hard to grab the element that you want and really as a last resort or an escape hatch, you could add say a data-test ID attribute to any component. We could call this like home link. And then you can reference that within your test by saying screen.get by test ID. 
And then you can pass it that ID that we just set up. But I'm gonna remove all this because what we set up to begin with is really the best option. And I'm gonna also undo, undo, get rid of that. And now that we have our home link, we want to expect that home link to have the attribute of href. That href should be a slash, so it goes to the home page. Now, this test is a little fragile because if we change something in our router file, this test will break. And maybe that's a good thing, but I think a smarter way to handle this test is going to say that we expect the home link to go to our routes.feed page. So we're using that named route. And that way, if we change the path within our router, our tests still pass, which is a good thing. We just need to make sure that we are importing routes at the top of our page. So I can give that a save and our test is passing. Let's keep moving on. If I scroll on down, we have when a user is not logged in. And for this group, we haven't created our login page or our sign up pages yet because Redwood can generate a lot of that for us when we set up auth. So I'm gonna keep those as skip tests. And this will also serve as a good reminder as something that we need to come back to and test properly. So in the next block, we can test the submit a link page. And we can use a lot of the same code that we already wrote and just rework some of those values. So I'm actually just going to copy this and come on down to our test and paste that in. We'll wanna get rid of our skip. And instead of our home link here, we want to grab our submit link and we can grab the text here. So this will be submit a link. And that should have the attribute of an href that goes to the submit link page. Now, as soon as I give this a save, this should pass. You can see our little green check mark there. Now for the test that links to the logout page, we can skip that for now, but we can write this last test. So it links to the profile page. So I'm gonna remove our skip here, paste in our test block that we've been using. And instead of home link here, I want to say profile link so we can get by the text, my profile. And then that should go to the profile page and we will need to pass it a parameter. So I'm gonna say the nickname is Amy, which lines up with what we hard coded in here on our nav component where we're saying the nickname is Amy. Now, as soon as we actually make this dynamic, this test will fail and we will need to update it so that it is dynamic. Now that we hit save, all of our tests are passing. Awesome, well, we have done all that we can do with the tests for this component for now, and tests do take a little while to get comfortable with and get the hang of. Sometimes it can be difficult to figure out exactly what you need to test, but once you do get the hang of it, I think you'll find that they can actually be quite enjoyable to write. And personally, I get a lot of satisfaction in seeing my tests pass, I love, that little green check mark. Yes, testing is an extra step to set up, but it also gives you confidence that your application is stable and you can make updates and changes to your application without worrying about it breaking. Or if it does break, your test will catch that error before it gets pushed to production. As a quick recap, in this video, we styled our nav component within Storybook and then wrote the corresponding tests to go with it. In the next video, we will keep building out the components that we need for our application, this time building out our header component. If you like this video and wanna see more videos on web design and development, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. <laughs> if you liked this video and wanna see more videos on web design and development, hit the subscribe button below. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm done.